Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week we're going to take a look at the Time Machine service that is built into OS X Server. Now, uh, Time Machine is Apple's backup uh, service that basically does incremental backups of your computers so that as you make changes, if you need to go back in time, you can go back in time and restore files or folders or things that you may have deleted that you accidentally deleted, let's say, and you want to get back. Time Machine allows you to do that. Now, in OS X Server, the Time Machine service is very specific in that it is for other machines on your network, not for the server itself. If you want to do a Time Machine backup, of the server you need to attach a drive to the server and then do it directly right from within the system preferences interface on the server itself not through the time machine service that's built into OS 10 server so I wanted to make that clear so that you didn't go and do it and then wonder why why isn't it working why can't I select on my server and again that's because the server is actually hosting the backups for other machines you have on your network now those machines can back up to time machine both through wired connections as well as wireless connections and so it works very nicely when you've got laptops that people are using in your business or in your home that they can automatically have those machines being backed up to a central location on your server uh, all of the time just like Time Machine normally does. So it's a good idea to get a uh, fairly large size drive and connect that to your server to use as your Time Machine backup so that uh, that way you've got plenty of space to have multiple machines backed up to that source. So this works very similar to how a time capsule might work uh, that Apple set up, only you're doing it on your server itself. Now this is the Time Machine service right here. You can see I've got two basic uh, tabs here. I've got settings and backups. Uh, in the settings area, you can see the access is off because I haven't turned it on yet. And like all of the other services, as I've showed you before, the, in the permissions, you can say it's available for all users or only some users and specify. So if you don't want uh, all kinds of users using your Time Machine backups, maybe you only, only want a few, uh, you could actually select those specific users so they don't take up any more space than you want them to. Let me just cancel that there. Now, the other thing you can do is uh, basically you can select your destinations. And so this is where you want your Time Machine backups to end up. Uh, the beauty of this is you can actually select exactly where you want those backups. So let's just click the plus here. And when we do that, we get this uh, screen that allows us to select the destination and, uh, and all of that. And so I'm going to choose. Now, I've in the past used my, uh, my Drobo for these backups because the Drobo is a very, uh, very large drive. I've got a lot of space on there, and I can add space when I need to. And so I'm going to select Drobo, and then I've already done backups before, so I'm just going to hit this Shared Items uh, folder right here so it doesn't create a, a new one for me. And uh, I'm just going to select that and say Choose. And so now you can see it's selected Volumes, Drobo, Shared Items. Uh, for you, if you just select the Drobo itself, uh, it will create this Shared Items folder for you automatically. Now, the other thing that's been added uh, here is that I can uh, actually limit the backups to a particular backup size. So, for instance, if I don't want each backup to get too big because I don't want to fill up all the space, I can set a limit on it on how many gigabytes I want. And usually it's a good idea to do, um, you know, maybe uh, double the size of the machines that you have backing up. Uh, so you can do it that way. Now, because I've got a Drobo, I'm going to leave that alone because it's just going to, I'm going to add storage as I need it as it fills up. But if you wanted to limit that, you could do that right in here. So let's say create now. And so what it's done is it's created uh, a shared items folder here on my drive. And what it does is it shows how much space I've got on my Drobo and how much I've used and how much I've got left. It shows that information right here. I can always come in and hit the pencil to edit it later if I want to, if I want to change that. Uh, I can do that and I can also delete uh, this particular uh, folder as well. Okay, so now that we understand how the interface works here for Time Machine, We've got everything set up, the service is live and it's working and it's ready to go here. Uh, now what we're going to do is let's take a look at how to set up the Time Machine service on a client machine. So I'm going to go over to a client machine and I'll show you how to set this up. Okay, here I am, am over on one of my client machines and I'm going to get it all set up for Time Machine. Now, all you need to do is come into System Preferences like you normally would and go to the Time Machine service here. And then what we're going to do is select our backup disk. And so once you've done that, you'll notice that our shared items folder that's on the server is showing right here. And it's showing that it's available to use for Time Machine. So we're going to say use this disk. And it's going to ask me now to authenticate just to make sure that I want to do that. So let me authenticate on that. Okay, once I've done that, I'll say connect. 
and it's going to connect to the server, connect to that drive, and now it's loaded it. And you can see that I've got this information uh, available and ready to go. And it's going to start in so many seconds, and it's thrown the service on for us so that it's all set. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just force it uh, to start now. We're going to say backup now. And what it's going to do is go and uh, basically start this backup process. It's looking for the backup disk. And it's going to get that all set and ready to go, and then it will start to, to back up. Now, the beauty of this is you can do this for all of your different machines. It'll put a different backup in that folder for each of your machines. And it'll also, uh, if you lose connection, it'll find the other backups that you've got there and connect those to uh, the backup on your uh, particular client machine that you're backing up. So it's going to take a while to look for the backup and get started. So I'm going to let this go. And uh, then what I'm going to do is basically show you what it looks like over on the server once a computer starts backing up so you can see how you can begin to track your backups and see what's going on. Okay, here we are. The uh, backup process has started. You can see it's starting the process. It's giving me, uh, you know, kind of a long time to get all this stuff backed up. It's going to back it up in pieces for me. So, uh, so we're going to let that run, but let me just show you something. Uh, let me just pop this down for a minute here. And if we come into Time Machine here on our server, this is the server app, and we go into backups, you'll notice that now it shows my MacBook Pro is backing up. It shows me as the owner, shows that the backup is in process or progress, and shows how much it's actually backed up so far. Uh, so the beauty of this is that you can track all of your backups for your different machines here. You know when their latest backup was or if it's in progress, and you can also track the total size. So it does give a lot, uh, a lot of great management features to it so you can manage the various devices on your network. Well, that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.